it's time to take a look at what's been going on in all things science. And this week, we're going to be turning our eyes to the skies. So who better than astrophysicist Crystal DiNapoli to talk all about, well, some big space news. I, people who watch Breakfast will know that uh, around Christmas time, I was leaping out of my skin because James Webb launched. And then since then, it's been doing this really delicate unfolding operation. And now we're just about to get some very exciting stuff out of it. Yes, we are. So uh, very excitingly, in the last few days, we've been able to see a test image from JWST. Yeah, that beautiful star yeah. field, right? They're kind of orange stars with big spikes on them. Big spikes, gorgeous. And what's mind blowing is it's a, it's a fantastic image, uh, wonderful quality, mm. but actually it's only been taken by the fine guidance sensor. So <laughs> this isn't actually an, uh, an image that um, is a perfect science image yet. It's just an indicator of the type of amazing science that JWST can actually do. Hold on, so this is, this is just a sensor that's not actually going to end up taking the best pictures, but it delivers stuff that looks like this? Yeah, so it's, um, it's uh, I guess like you could better compare it to being like the finder scope on a telescope, mm -hmm. something that helps you line everything up, but not uh, not that, that image that we're waiting for coming in actually a couple days. So yeah, we're just about to see the first picture land. This is the process you can see here of, uh, of the telescope unfolding, but NASA have announced the targets that it might be looking at. Yeah. What, are you, what are you expecting and hoping to see? Well, I'm really excited by the targets because we've been given like a smorgasbord of all mm. these different types of objects we can look at. So we're going to have be looking at nebula, which show us like the birth of stars. It's sort of like a stellar nursery. Mm -hmm. And then also seeing something that we call a planetary nebula, which doesn't have anything to do with planets. It's actually a remnant of a dying star. So we're seeing those births and we're seeing those deaths of the earliest stars in the in the early universe. It's which is so exciting because yeah. <laughs> we're getting a deeper look uh, into space than we've ever had before, right? Yep. And that's not actually the only space news you've got for us because there's something else that's going on right here in Australia, but it's a big essentially globe-wide sort of effort. Yeah, so I'm really excited. So uh, we have an international collaboration between Monash University and the University of Warwick, as well as amazing other eight institutions, uh, to actually bring telescopes called the GoTo telescopes to Australia. And so uh, GoTo is gra uh, Gravitational Wave Optical Transient. A lot observer, a lot of big words, mm. but essentially it's all to do with detecting gravitational waves. This is something uh, we've been able to detect in the last few years, but it's not something you can see. We detect them with these really cool interferometers like LIGO, uh, but uh, this will actually specifically be trying to look at the optical part, the stuff that we can see from these remnants. Mm. So it'll be happening right here in Siding Springs Observatory on the beautiful Gamilaroi country. Yeah, Siding Springs, I've been up there before. It's, it's stunning locations with yeah. beautiful clear skies so often and it's it's just a wonderful place. So, so we'll be housing part of the experiment and the rest is happening on the other side of the world? Yep. Uh, it's, uh, we require these vast distances to be able to look deeply into space. It's similar to how a lot of our uh, network of telescopes have worked, mm. the ones that help us see the black holes and everything. Uh, so, yeah, it's exciting to be a part of that collaboration and have something in Australia that's contributing to really cool science. Yeah, and gravitational waves. Just that We're talking about little, like, ripples, ripples. in space-time, right, that, like, make atoms move by fractions of an atom. Yes. Like, it's, oh, oh, it's incredible. <laughs> hey, OK, one more thing. I want to bring it back from space a little bit because I know that's where you're most comfortable. Yeah. But you spotted a story this week about some weird, creepy-looking skies. Yeah, so in South Dakota, we had some very apocalyptic, bright green skies forming. Uh, it started a lot of conversation about, where, does this mean that this is a, a tornado event? Uh -huh. uh, not quite, but it is still a really, really cool feature that actually happens with these big storms. So what's going on here? Because like, I look at this, I know other people look at it and go, oh, the world's ending. But <laughs> I look at green skies and I think, oh, there's some cool physics going on here. Yeah, so it's all to do with the way that uh, light can be scattered. Light does some quirky things. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it's sort of a mix of in our late afternoons, we tend to get these big storms that can form, which is also around the time that we're getting beautiful sunsets. So our light, uh, the sun's, the angle that the sun's at, essentially we're getting beautiful oranges and reds, uh, but we also have ice and water in these huge storms that's scattering blue light. Mm. And so together, this is how we get this sort of green hue. Yeah, I, I think it's cool because, you know, we already know the sky goes everything from blue to red uh, and, like, yellows and oranges, of course. Uh, and you usually in these big storms get a good aqua colour, but start with some reddish light and, uh, yeah, you end up with this creepy green eerie. <laughs> oh, cool. so cool. <laughs> Thank you for bringing it back to weather to finish out. Uh, best of luck with James Webb. I, yes. I, I can't wait to see these amazing pictures. Wednesday, 12.30, midnight. You know, wake up very early or stay up very late, but so worth it. Or just go to bed as normal, tune into News Breakfast, and I'll have the latest for you for sure on Wednesday. <laughs> Crystal, thank you so much for joining us for a lovely little nerd chat. Yeah, I loved it. <laughs>